This is Peter's last letter, a little bit similar to 2 Timothy for Paul. And he's, he's mainly warning that apostasy was coming. Lord and, and knowing his word, it's really a call to godliness. And as we know, apostasy has come and uh, continues to, to afflict us. In uh, chapter 3, verse 17, uh, he says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, he said, you, you know, you're not, this is not going to be a surprise to you. I'm telling you ahead of time. Beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. So there's the warning. And then verse 18, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, know who you believe, know what you've believed. Now, last week we looked at, at verses 1 through 11. We, uh, we talked about knowing the Lord, growing in the Lord, and enjoying the reward. Uh, it was a good introduction to, to the book. And uh, tonight we want to look at the rest of, of chapter 1. Let me read starting in verse 10, uh, 2 Peter 1, verse 10. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. I'm just going to stop reading there for the moment. Uh, now, if I say Paul sometimes when I'm talking about Peter, you... you you know, you know what I'm talking about, but uh, P I started to say that, that's why I said uh, Peter uh, is encouraging us, God is encouraging us, uh, number one in, in verse 10, to be diligent just ourselves. Uh, we need to be diligent to make our calling and election sure. We need to know about our own relationship with the Lord. Uh, we need to be careful of, of our walk uh, with God. But then in verse 12, he's saying, I'm not going to be negligent to put you in remembrance. You know, we have a responsibility to each other as well. Uh, of course, I have a responsibility personally myself between me and the Lord. But as Christians, we're not just in this on our own. You know, being in Christ puts us in, in a family. It puts us in a relationship with other, other Christians. And we may not always like that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, God knows we, we need that. And he, he says, don't be negligent towards others either. He's not going to be negligent. Uh, we need to be the same. Uh, the, the title I gave to this message tonight is Remember, Remind, Repeat. <laughs> and we need to remember some things. We need to remind each other about those things once in a while. And uh, we need to repeat those things. We need to keep doing uh, the things of faith. Uh, three times in uh, verses 12 and following, uh, he, he uses the, the expression, uh, remember, remember. In uh, verse 12, I'm going to put you always in remembrance. We haven't read it yet, but verse, verse 13, he says, I'm going to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Then again in, in verse 15, uh, he says, I want you after I die to have these things always in remembrance. <laughs> uh, do you think he wants us to remember? I, I think he does. And, you know, it's, in one sense, it's negligent of us not to remind each other. You know, to, to see someone falling away or, or having a, a problem and to say, oh, well, you know, that's negligent, really, in our relationship with others. In uh, chapter 3 and uh, verse 1, again, he says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. Uh, he says, I'm, I'm going to remind you. And uh, while it, it's negligent of us not to remind each other, it's also foolish not to listen. You know, there's a lot of times when God puts another Christian in our path who, however they do it, whether they do it in a good way or a bad way, remind us of some of the truths of God's Word. And uh, we're foolish if we don't listen to the reminders that, and the people that uh, God puts in our life. It made me think of many of the verses in Proverbs. You know, we, we learned a verse a while back that we sang Proverbs 13, 20, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Remember singing that? 
but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Uh, you know, if we're going to uh, follow the Lord, then the Lord is going to help us along the way. And sometimes it's going to be that there's going to be people who will remind us of things. Uh, in Proverbs 12 and verse 15, he says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Uh, Proverbs 13, 1, A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. There's just going to be times when we're going, to, we're going to be saying things to each other that, well, I, I don't know how it is at your house, but uh, Doyle and I sometimes remind each other of things. And, you know, it can be pretty irritating to have somebody remind you of something. I know, I know, I'm, I'm going to do it, to, you know, whatever. Uh, of course, none of you would ever have that happen at your house. But uh, it, it can be irritating to be reminded, but... Uh, we need to take it as from the Lord. Now, one of the things that amazes me about Peter is what he was and what he became in Christ. He became a very, you know, he was such a hard man, it seemed like. You know, a real out there kind of guy. And, and God turned him into a, a godly, tender-hearted man. And, and in his speaking there to, uh, to the, in God's word here, you know, he's very gentle about it. And uh, we need to, to learn to be gentle in, in reminding each other uh, but we need to be careful to be reminded. There's a, a verse in Hebrews, Hebrews 3 and uh, verse 12, when he talks about, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily, <laughs> while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Now God says there's just times when we're, we're going to be reminding each other and uh, we need to be reminded. God uses other things. We're not, we're not the only tool that God has in his toolbox. Uh, God uses his word. God uses the Holy Spirit. God uses uh, circumstances and you know, all kinds of things. Um, it made me think of Israel. You know, God really blessed Israel, didn't he? Uh, there was times when God rescued Israel. And in Deuteronomy chapter 8, God gives them a, a reminder. This comes up quite often. Deuteronomy 8, uh, let me read a couple of verses here. Verse 11. He says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command you this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built good, goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. And God is saying, R remember, be reminded. Don't get careless just because things are going well. Um, God had blessed Israel, and he, he reminded them. He warned them, don't forget. And, you know, God has blessed us, and God has rescued us. And we need to be careful that we don't, that we don't forget, uh, that we don't just get busy with the things of life and forget about the real things of life. You know, you can get so busy doing the little things that you forget what life's all about sometimes. And he, he uses the expression there, put you always in remembrance of these things. These things. Now, I believe he's referring there to the truths that we looked at last week, basically. Uh, the precious uh, truth of, of salvation. You know, we need to be uh, remembering the reality of salvation. Uh, Last week, we, I used the expression, know the Lord. Uh, there in, in verse 1, he talks about precious faith. Uh, we have a precious faith. In um, some of the following verses, he talked about the riches of our salvation. Uh, that's something we need to remember. Uh, in verse 3, he talks about how we have all things that pertain unto life and godliness. We need to remember that. Uh, we're, not, we're not paupers spiritually. Uh, he talked about the responsibility of salvation. You know, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and so on. Uh, and he talks about the, the result of salvation. We, we need to remember these things. Uh, we need to be reminded. Uh, he says, uh, I'm going to put you in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the, in the present truth. Uh, in the midst of life, you know, in the midst of doing all these busy things that we do, uh, remember... <coughs> Uh, the man Wednesday night, uh, well, actually I've been listening to a lot of those different things in my car as I drive, so I'm not sure if you've heard it yet or not, but uh, he, he talked about 
the greatest problem a person will face is that they're lost and on their way to hell. It's not whether they lose their job or have poor health or have trouble with the in-laws. The greatest problem in life someone is ever going to deal with is that they're lost and on their way to hell. He felt like the second greatest problem was a Christian who's out of fellowship with the Lord. And then everything else falls in line behind that. You know, we can get so worried about the other things, the little things of life. You know, my leg fell off. Oh, boy, you know, that's terrible. Well, you can live without a leg, but you can't live without Christ. And uh, we need to be careful and, and remember uh, what God has done for us and, and the things that, that are important. Uh, we've been learning 2 Corinthians uh, 4, uh, verses 16 to 18, uh, where he says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You know, all, all these things that are happening, really, uh, like, like the Bible says there, um, the things which are seen are temporal. They're just temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. And, you know, we can get so caught up with the, the things we see and the things that are irritating and the things that are immediate that we forget about the eternal. I think it was Bob Jones who said, don't sacrifice the eternal on the altar of the immediate. You think about that one. Don't sacrifice the eternal on the altar of the immediate. And you know, many people are doing that. They're just living for the moment and throwing away eternity. Uh, and so he reminds us, he says, remember, we need to remind each other. And that we need not only to remember and to remind each other, but we need to live these truths. We need to live by faith. Uh, we need to know, we do know the truth. You know, he says there, uh, I'm putting you in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Listen, if you're saved, it means you've come to the truth. <laughs> Jesus is that, that truth. We, we know the Lord. Uh, the Bible uh, is that truth. Jesus was, was uh, praying. He, he, he was praying to the Father. and He said, sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is truth. And we have the word of God. We have the Son of God. Uh, and combined, they're unbeatable. You know, John 8, 31, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. <laughs> you know, we're his disciples. We have his word. Man, we've, we've got what we need. And we need to, to live those things. He, he talks there in verse 12 how that we are established in the present truth. And I, I want us to look at three truths tonight. This has been so far kind of by way of introduction, but um, I want us to look at three truths uh, that we know from God's Word that he, he presents here in these following uh, passages. Uh, the, the first one in verses 13 through 15 is we have hope. Let, let's read verse 13. Yea, I think it means as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be after... Uh, that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. You know, in case you didn't understand what he was saying about the tabernacle, he, he, he made it very clear. He said, I'm talking about my body, and when I die, I'm going to put it off, you know, when, when I'm deceased. Uh, this body is just a tent. Now, some have more substantial tents than others, and uh, some people's tents are in better shape than others, but uh, still, when we die, uh, it's going to be just a dead body. We're going to leave it behind. And as Christians, we live by a sacred philosophy. Now, we don't live by a secular philosophy. You could say that was stated in 1 Corinthians 15 when he says, he talks about, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. That's a secular philosophy. Oh, it's just, you know, life is just what it is and just don't worry about it. We live by the sacred philosophy, uh, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all for the glory of God. Now, they both mention eating and drinking, but uh, for one, there, there's no absolutes. There, it's always changing. And by the way, when you get to eating and drinking, diets are always changing, aren't they? They'll tell you, you know, eat this, don't eat this, oh, eat it, don't eat this. Uh, uh, the world's philosophy is always changing. 
God teaches us absolutes. He teaches us that we can know the truth. And we live by that sacred philosophy that God, that there is a God and God has spoken. And there is truth and there is right and wrong. And, uh, you know, we have hope because when we put off this body, when we put off this tabernacle, God has said there's eternal life. Now, I won't make any personal comments, but uh, in the news this last week, a famous person died. And one of the things they said about him is, now, he wasn't afraid to die. It's very likely that man woke up in hell when he died. Now, I don't know. I'm not the judge. I hope he's not. I hope he had trusted Christ as his Savior. But listen, it, it's a fool who is not afraid to die without Christ. That's just a fool. Now, God says here, you know, we've been established in the present truth. And, and Peter is saying, you know, I'm going to put off this body. But, you know, we have hope even, even in the midst of death. In uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, Paul talked about it when when he talked about uh, death and, and the resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15 and uh, verse 19, he said, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. What he's saying is Christianity is not just a philosophy. It's not just an idea that we just use while, while we're alive. Christianity is about eternity. Uh, in, in later on in, in verse 50. Uh, 54 of 1 Corinthians 15, he says, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Listen, none of us can please God by keeping the law. We've all broken the law. And because of that, uh, the sting of, of death is sin. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 57, for the Christian, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Uh, we have hope. We have hope for this life. Uh, we have hope for eternity. Uh, Paul made a similar statement when he said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. See, he, he said, I have hope in this life for me to live as Christ, and I have hope in eternity to die as gain. And what a blessing that is. As Christians, uh, our faith uh, in Christ gives us hope. Heaven is our home. And, uh, you know, going through death's door, it, it can be very painful. It can be an awful thing. And the Bible, the Bible calls death an enemy. Uh, but uh, we have hope because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, in, in 2 Peter there, not only do we have hope, we have Christ. Look at verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, and there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Now, Peter is talking there about his experiences. He experienced the Lord. Uh, he, he was with him, you know, when, uh, when, when God spoke from heaven and different things. This wasn't a story. That's what he's saying there. He says, this wasn't a story we heard. This is what we lived with him. This was our experience with Christ. And, and man, it changed his life. Uh, walking with Jesus made Peter a different man. Uh, 1 Peter 5, verse 1, in my Bible, it's just one page back. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. He witnessed, he partook of, of the things of Christ. It not only changed his life, it changed his message. You know, when people ask Peter, you know, what, what should I do? Repent and believe, you know. I mean, he had a message because he had the message of, of Christ. Uh, it, it decided his death as well. Peter died for following Christ. And uh, you know, this, this was his experience. What is your experience with Christ? Uh, you know, do you have Christ? Many people know John 3.16, but the, that same chapter ends with this statement, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, 
And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. It's so important that we have Christ. As Christians, we have hope. We have Christ. Uh, we have everlasting life in, in Christ. Uh, 1 John uh, 5, 12, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And uh, the, the very next verse, he says in 1 John 5, 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. More than experience, we have faith in God's Word. You know, Peter had great experience uh, with Jesus, and uh, you know, that must have been an amazing thing. But notice what he, what he says now here in verse, uh, verse 19 of first, Second Peter chapter 1. You know, they heard this voice from heaven. He says in verse 19, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, verse 20, what's that saying is that Scripture doesn't, didn't come because somebody decided they were going to write a book. It's no private interpretation. It's the Holy Spirit giving them the words, giving us, it, it's God's Word. Uh, so we not only have hope, we not only have Christ, we have the Bible. We have the, the written Word of God, and, and that's where, uh, where our faith comes from. In verse 20, he compares it, I'm sorry, verse 19, he compares it to the light. You do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Listen, when, when things get dark, turn on the light. <laughs> and go to the light. Now, that's what God wants us to do. In Psalm 119, he says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In 1 John 1, 5, he says, This then is the message which we've heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Now, one of my favorite verses for assurance of salvation, very simply, Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, that's, that's the light I go to and uh, remind myself and remember, uh, I've believed what God has said. I have Christ. I have hope because of, of God's Word. And we need to remember, it, it's God's Word. In 2 Timothy, he says, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That word inspiration means God breathed. Have you ever had the breath knocked out of you? If you ever have, you, you won't forget it. Uh, you can't breathe. I remember having it happen when I was a young man, and oh, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> it's a real frightening thing. And one of the ways you know that a person is choking is they can't talk. To talk, you have to be able to breathe. And when the Bible uses that term, God breathed, it means God spoke. It was His Word. It was coming from Him. It's God's Word. Uh, we, we've been hearing a lot of uh, good truths and the messages Wednesday nights, and uh, one that was a blessing to me recently was when he said that we need to track our thinking, not our feelings. You know, it's so easy to go by our feelings. We're up and down and, out and so on. But we can't always change our feelings. We can change our thinking. Uh, my thinking needs to start with the facts of God's Word. It needs to start with the truth. Because I have Christ, and because I have the Bible, I have hope. God is enough. <laughs> And, you know, my feelings may not tell me that, but God's Word tells me that. Uh, we can, uh, there's some things that we can know. Now, unfortunately, we're going to be pretty sure we can know that we're going to die. It shouldn't surprise us, it, it really. I guess, I don't know, maybe at some point in our life we think maybe we won't, but everybody's going to die someday unless the Lord returns and, and takes us home. Uh, but, you know, as well, I can know that I'm saved. Like we read in 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And we don't base it on our feelings. We base it on God's thinking, God's word. I can know that I'm free. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. We can know that by God's word. I can know where I'm going. You know, Jesus in John 14 said, I'm I'm going to prepare a place for you. 
and I'm going to come and receive you unto myself. Now, there's a lot of things that, that we can know, but don't let your thinking be the guide. Let it be God's thinking. Sometimes your thinking will lie to you. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? You know, Jesus, or the Bible says in, uh, in Jeremiah, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. But we were talking earlier about mental health and, and things before. Y your mind can trick you. Your mind can do all kinds of things. Go to God's word for the truth. That's the leveler. That's, the, that's what will show us. The Bible says, God says, he cannot lie. Titus 1.12, let God's thinking be your guide. His word is truth. Let me ask you, have you come to him in faith, believing for salvation? It's so important that, that, you, that you know the Lord, that you be established in the present truth. Uh, you know, not, it's not being good that will get us to heaven. I meet people all the time who think they've been good enough. Strangely enough, some of the kids who come to Sunday school think they've never sinned. Uh, I know they've sinned. Their brothers and sisters know they've sinned. Uh, being good won't get you to heaven. Uh, there's no ceremony or experience that will get you to heaven. The Bible says the way to heaven is Jesus. And it's so important that we, we've come to him in faith. Uh, not only for eternity, but are you believing God, are you believing Jesus for life right now? Are you trusting him day by day? Uh, you know, we need to think of verse 19 here. We have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Listen, if this isn't a dark place, I don't know what is. You know, they used to call Africa the dark continent. Uh, we live in a dark world. It's not just a continent. Um, a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Jesus is coming again. He's that day star. Uh, are you believing him for this present life? Uh, that's what we need, a light that shines in a dark place. You know, when the world is in, con in confusion, we can have the truth. We do have the truth. Uh, he says, I want to put you in remembrance of these things. Though you know them, be and be established in the present truth. We need to remind each other. Uh, we have hope. We have God's word. We have Christ. Uh, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. And the reason... Uh, this is uh, so wonderful is because our faith is in Jesus. That's why Peter calls it in verse 1, precious faith. We have a precious faith. I, I meet people who have, a worthless, have worthless faith. You ever met somebody like that? They're, they're trusting some strange and weird thing. Uh, listen, we trust the God of the universe who gave his son for us. We have a precious faith, and it's precious because of Christ. I want to encourage you. Uh, this evening. Uh, remember. Remember what God has done for you. Uh, remember where you came from and what, what God has, has changed. Uh, remind each other of it. You know, we need to be praising the Lord, and uh, we need to be repeating what God has taught us. We need to be living, living by faith. Uh, let's go to him in, in prayer this evening, and uh, maybe you just need to spend some time talking to the Lord about this.